Facts First presents Man Spends 17 Years Building a Lamborghini in His Basement If you've ever seen the movie Cannonball Run, you've seen the Lamborghini Countach. When one man saw the movie, he never imagined it would start him on a decades-long project. He spent 17 years building the Lamborghini from scratch in his basement, and the results are awesome. Before we get into the video, though, we're also building something – a community of like-minded people who love videos. If you're one of those people, click the like button. And also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future vids. The Lamborghini owner's name is Ken Imhoff. He was born in Oxford, which is located in England. You may have heard of it because it's home to one of the world's most prestigious universities. Well, Ken didn't live in Oxford for long. His father was in the United States Air Force, and while in England, he received orders to move back to the U.S. when his abroad service was complete. His love of cars started at an early age. In this photo, there's a picture of a sports car chassis that his father made by hand, and that sparked a lifelong love of cars. Well, after years of being a car enthusiast, he saw the car of his dreams. It wasn't just any car, it was a Lamborghini. And not just any Lamborghini. It was the exact car seen in the 1981 comedy classic Cannonball Run. A decade after he first saw the Lamborghini on television, he decided he would take on a major project. If he had the money, he could have found one exactly like the one in the movie. But he didn't have the money, so he decided to spend the next 17 years building it from scratch. If that's not amazing enough, he built the car in his basement, in the home that he shared with his wife Eileen and his two daughters. Fortunately, he had worked with metal his entire life. He understood a lot about engineering and welding. These skills were important for the type of job that he was planning to take on. He could have started his project in the garage attached to his house, but he decided against that. He knew how harsh Wisconsin winters could be, so he decided that he'd get a lot more work done in his heated basement. It was September 1990 when he began the project that cost him thousands of dollars and almost two decades to complete. It all started with a simple wooden frame. He figured if he started out with the measurements taken from a 1 16th scale model, he'd be able to determine the shape of the body panels. When it came time to create the car's panels, he used a forming tool and did it by hand. That took him close to a year. He started from the front and worked his way back until the entire wooden frame was covered. He waited to do the complex parts, such as the doors and the trunk, until the end. Throughout the project, Ken realized that there was going to be some mistakes and corrections often. He found that even welding the panels was all about trial and error as they warped on more than one occasion. When the panels were done, the project moved on. It took him years for him to get everything to the correct height and ground clearance. As he continued to work on the job, he took photos of his progress. When the first phase of the job was done, his work wasn't over. He had to paint the car, but first he needed to do five layers of bodywork. This was extremely time-consuming, but it had to be done if the car was going to be perfect. According to Ken, one of the hardest parts of the project was to add the internal components like brakes, pedals, and fuel cells. When it came time to paint the car, he needed a professional off-site booth. That meant he had to individually move all 33 pieces back and forth one at a time. It took 25 hours, and it wasn't easy. In 2008, the car was done, but it was trapped in the basement. He had to knock a wall down just to get the car outside to take its first ride. The final product is amazing, though. What Ken did should inspire others who are thinking about taking on projects. With the right attitude and plenty of patience, anything's possible. So now that you've seen what Ken can do, what are you going to tackle that you've been dreaming of? Me, personally? I'm going to start working on that Mr. Potato Head I received in 1972. Subscribe for more!